Yeah, but that also taught you something. It taught you me know, something. Those are the quiet nights, quiet evenings. Uh, well, I, mean, I, had, I had the same, so I'll speak from my own experience. Yeah. So my father worked in a factory, mm -hmm. and he worked in Edmonton, so, so I had him in my life yeah. as a child. And uh, he's passed away now, over 10 years ago. But the experiences and memories that I have in the evening time yeah. was like either he comes home at six or seven, yeah. same thing. Yeah. There's a meal, there's a peg, peg yeah. and there's a sleep, right? Yep. <laughs> uh, there's not much like socializing. And often for a large chunk of time, actually he worked the night shift. So mm -hmm. he would come home at actually two and he, we wouldn't see him in the evenings yeah. because when we come home from school, he's already gone to work. So there's absence, right? There's a feeling of absence from a familial and from a personal level that feels like absence. Mm -hmm. So I experienced that. Yep. And upon reflection, that's true, but also there's a feeling of provision. Mm -hmm. And and like um, our house is the bounty in our home yep. partly existed because of, because of the, the absence. Yeah. That's that's what it took. Mm -hmm. um, and then and then later on in life, when it was closer to his retirement and yep. stuff, it, like it was late. We had adult conversations late, like really late after marriage, yeah, oh well. right? Like I was married, had a kid, and then, <laughs> and then that's when it started. Yeah. It was really late, well, and that's okay. That's no, just that's how normal. it went. Yeah, and it's fine. I don't think it's normal. There's I think, no, actually think it's very abnormal. I don't think, but, it's like but a it just line. it just went. Yeah. That's just what it was. Welcome back to episode number 72 of the MBM podcast. We're here with Mook and Am, the hosts of this podcast. You guys are wonderful <laughs> dudes, uh, helping to spread positive messages and impact the uh, community in a, in a meaningful way. Yep. We got Mook here. He'd like to share some words regarding his uh, experiences with me thus far <laughs> and where we're going to take the conversation today. Yep. Yeah, I guess, I mean, Roger just said it well enough, but yeah, welcome to Modern Brown Man Podcast. Um, yeah, I think for this podcast, it was very important for, for us to bring on someone that we look uh, look up to, that has gone through a lot of experiences, that has a lot of words to share, and of course, he introduced himself already, but yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, no, I think, as he said, I think it's, um, I think what... What you what do you have a lot to present to the audience? I feel like is um, you kind of living through all of it <clears throat> when it comes to business segment, mm. um, and you do things which you like enjoying. Mm -hmm. Which like we, we play in the same division as Raju, so and we we kicked their ass every single time so far. <laughs> yeah, we, we've been smacked a few times. Let's be real, we've been smacked a few but, times. But you know, it just goes to show um, balancing his business, which is not easy, which is a uh, pivotal physio, correct? Yes. And how many locations do you have now? Sorry? Four. Four locations. So having four locations, like I have, I remember running two stores my own. I'm like, how am I going to do this? So balancing, not even like having your four, you know, you have four kids now mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and you have a wife that you got to cater to. It's, just because you get made, that doesn't mean, you know, a woman need is, a woman's needs to be neglected. A lot of people do lose in sight of that. And, mm -hmm. you know, I feel like you're an embodiment of, you know, we all strive to be better human beings day by day, you know, right, right. strive towards something that we can be proud of each other. So, um, yeah, I think a lot of people can learn and understand that we all have flaws mm -hmm. and the process of what living life is, it's a continuous journey, no matter what what stage you are at life with, mm -hmm. sure. whether it's 30, 40, 50. And uh, yeah, I feel like you'd be a perfect guest for this to understand that, you know, youngins that might be misled by certain things because, oh, yeah. I'm young, I just want to have fun, this, sure. that. So, you know, and then, yeah, Mox always told me about like, man, Raju, this guy has his, his businesses, his family, everything. And then, and he plays basketball on top of that. Yeah. I'm like, I gotta meet Basketball's this the kicker, I think, yeah. right? <laughs> I'm like, he oh, plays basketball? Say no more. We had, we had a, uh, a few friends of mine and I, we had a, a conversation similar to this yesterday, uh, yesterday evening. And the conversation started with, you know, getting a sense of how does one, uh, you everything. know, support his partner mm -hmm. in a meaningful way. And, yep. and, you know, there was some, there were some emotions and there was some sharing <laughs> of stories. <laughs> and so we were, we were kind of, they were going around the table and everyone had their own opinion and so on. Right. And uh, so, so I like I don't 
and somebody asked me a couple of weeks ago, he's like, ah, how do you balance all this balance, balance? So first of all, I don't, <laughs> I just, I don't, I just don't think, happens. I think there's actually a, like a lack of balance to be honest. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I've shared this before that, uh, the biggest three priorities I have are my family and my career and my fitness. Yep. And, uh, in the, in a typical day, I will hit two of them. Damn. I don't think that I hit three most <laughs> days. And at the end of the week, I will hit three in some ratio. Yeah. Well, my goal is to kind of, those are the big three, right? Mm -hmm. and, and there's others that spin off of those three, but those are the big three. Yeah. Um, to your point about having like the partner part, yep. the wife, for me, that's my wife, Deepa. Yeah. And uh, she's the rock. Let's just call it what it is. Yep. Without her, none of that stuff happens. She's the rock of the house. She's, um, I've said it before, I, I stole Kevin Durant's line. She's the real MVP, <laughs> MVP. <laughs> right? She is, and, and she really is. She's mm. strong, she's stable, she creates, she's the magnet of the house, she's a social butterfly. Yep. She, so she's magic, you know, she, she makes it go. And, and I don't like cater to her, I think. I know what you're getting yeah. at, but that, like, I wouldn't say that I use that language. Yep. And we're partners, yep, and exactly. I try to be the best version of myself period. Exactly. And then through that, I'm trying to deliver, I, I believe in Seva. It's mm -hmm. a big tenant of my lifestyle and Sikhi faith. Yeah. So for me, uh, what I have to give to the world is probably the things that I prioritize. Yeah. There's, there's a little bit of mentorship. There's a little bit of physiotherapy, a little mm -hmm. bit of positive uh, attitude, a yeah. little bit of love for the kids. These are the ingredients that I have to share. And so I try to do my best in these areas. Yeah. And there's areas where I don't thrive. No, I don't have skills. Not. So no. I don't, I, I, I'm like, I recruit. <laughs> Yo, Am, I need some help over here. Right? Then I'm looking for help in those areas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in terms of like ingredients to, uh, to contribute, to give Seva, it's uh, giving what I have and the best version of myself to all those things, mm -hmm. including my partner yep. and including that marriage, marriage, marriage yep. bond, including I, I'm a father. I saw a picture. Somebody showed me a picture yesterday <laughs> and it looked actually like the Lion King, right? <laughs> but, but it wasn't. It was like yeah. a, a large lion and a small lion. It was a very majestic scene. Uh, my friend Nav used the, the phrase majestic, right? <laughs> it was a very beautiful piece of art. And uh, my friend asked me, what's the first word that comes to mind when you see this? Mm -hmm. And I use the word fatherhood. Mm. That's what I see. That is yeah. what my brain did. Whereas somebody else said the word majestic. Mm. You know, so mm -hmm. we looked at it different angles, and that's how our, our brains perceived mm -hmm. things, right? Yeah. So yeah, that, that's kind of how I um, look at things right now. Mm -hmm. It has evolved, and and to your point about like uh, having fun. <laughs> I mean, have fun. Of yeah. course, there's yeah. nothing wrong with that. Uh, you might be alluding to like some of the, the vices <laughs> of life perhaps yeah. and, and there's a, there's a time and a place for those and we're meant to learn from those and we're on this earthly planet so experience them if you wish yeah. ex explore and, and, and dive into them if you wish there's temptation there's vices all those things and so we're human it is, we're uh, going to have flaws and we're going to do uh, humanity is going to do those things <laughs> humanity has created it those is, things created and we'll do reason. those things and then on the flip side yeah, as you self-actualize as you try to you know, uh, develop a definition of yourself and a, a version of yourself that you want, you're proud of looking in the mirror and you, you try to aim for something, then uh, it, things become more clear mm. and, and uh, less of those things. It kind of becomes almost simple, Sim yeah, not natural. simple, that's the wrong word, but yeah. almost simple in nature. Yeah. And the decisions become very, um, almost like easier. Yeah, so there's a, there's a bit of a beauty to the process. Yeah. And then uh, along the way, you know, the, the types of decisions you make and the types of influences that you have oh, and the yeah. types of actions that you take, you kind of become a magnet for more of that stuff. Yep. And, and more of those people and more of those types of dialogues. And then the, the, you, I, you know, I like having those, I like allowing those to influence mm -hmm. me in a better way. You and I were talking before we went on the air here yeah. about some of your experience in India. Yeah. And already I was inspired. Yeah. I've never had 10 years in India. Yeah. That That's a beautiful story mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, I am like proud of, even though I haven't lived it, lived it yeah. I already feel connected to it, you know, like, so, so like I would let, welcome that influence. Yeah. Uh, that's a beautiful part of, it's a simple Kethi farm. Yeah, uh, simple. There's, and there's many other, like you didn't say the words, yeah. but let's acknowledge it. You probably had some experiences around the Gurdwara. Yeah. You probably had some experiences around every, the family members every that were there. Every right? evening would be at the Gurdwara. You, you had some experiences around the cooking and yeah. the nature of the farm. And you had some experiences around simplicity and walking in the, in the fields Field. in the morning when the sun was rising yeah. in the 
fog was coming in. You had art yep. in your life. So you didn't say the words, but already I'm inspired by these yeah, you things. Visualize right? it that wow. you visualize you, you lived that yeah, life yeah. in the early stage, mm -hmm. zero to 10, not, right? Yep. You lived it like in your developmental formative years. It's beautiful. And that's yeah. what I tell people. Like one thing I took away from me growing up in India was a profound respect I had just for life in general. Mm -hmm. um, I think um, not to... Because like it's hard for people to understand what I mean when they when they live here. Because right. to a certain extent, we are privileged here. Because like we have a lot of things given. Huge, right? right? So yeah. when I was growing up back home, like we used to go to the share sometimes. Yes. And man, amount of time it would break my heart to see amount of kids that don't have a home, mm -hmm. amount of kids, mm -hmm. uh, and, or even like you know, parents that are out there begging for money, mm. this that. And I'm just like sitting here. I'm like, man, I just go in my kid pull something out of the ground or a carrot or a gaj or like a moodly or something yeah. and I eat it right then and there. Mm -hmm. And then more as my mom showed me as and, and going back to the relationship aspect, my mom always been a pillar to our whole entire family, even the mm -hmm. bend. Mm -hmm. The amount of under you know the gratitude I have for this woman is it's um a thank you is will never be enough. Mm -hmm. But I just try to live my best life to what her, what her morals and what her values she taught me to always give back. And, and Raju, you spoke it beautifully when it comes to Seva. Yes. Man, this woman, I'm not even kidding, the stuff that she's done in our community back home in the Gurdwara, it didn't go unnoticed. I, I still remember it to this day. We're leaving, this is 2006 when we're leaving from India. Mm. Whole Pend was at our house. Every single person was sobbing that my mom was leaving. Mm -hmm. And when I saw that, I'm like, why are they crying? At the time, I didn't understand it. At the time, I'm like, well, we're just going to end it. We'll, we'll be back here and there. But yeah. I didn't understand the impact that she had. Mm -hmm. Everybody who saw her had a smile on their face. Mm -hmm. Like my mom's name is, nickname is Papu. That's what everybody calls her. And and the amount of seva she did at the Gurdwara, helping everybody, or even at the pen. Every Sundays, she would have people, like, like you know, quote unquote, we call them payas, right? Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, they're human beings. Every Sunday, she would cook something. It would come in, sit down have a feast mm -hmm. and, and and i realize okay, okay i realize like man my mom don't gotta do this mm -hmm. she don't have to do this and from that point on i understood like this is what life is and where, imagine where if did I it didn't come from that. why why what was her why her why was um my grandmother mm -hmm. which so is actually her, her mother uh, no uh, so uh, not grandmother but like her in-law so pretty much her in-law okay. so yeah, yeah. i was actually named after my grandmother mm -hmm, <laughs> it's mm -hmm. so weird yeah, yeah. and this is one of the thing i want to i never spoke this story about mm -hmm. um so I, I was named after my grandmother yeah. uh she was huge on giving back mm -hmm. um selfless acts never to put down anybody regardless where they are in life mm -hmm. whether they're poor rich don't have an arm whatever it may be mm -hmm. she never looked anybody as not equal yes and funny enough she passed away um six months before I was born mm. and they chose to mm -hmm. uh, name me after her mm -hmm. and everybody comes up to me that Lily said man you're a copy of her yes and yes. I'm like what do you guys mean by that yeah. like the way you act um the way you're caring calm yeah. like you have that calmness that she had you have her essence yeah exactly do you believe it I personally at first I didn't mm -hmm. And then I really started honing in on, I'm like, that mm -hmm. means something. It does, yeah. Then I'm like, then I started- Part of your purpose. Exactly, then yeah. I started understanding. I'm like, you know, I, I was, I'm like, what does that mean? Mm. I literally sat down with my mom. I'm like, what, what was she like? Yeah, you asked the questions. I asked, Good. Exactly. I'm How like, old were you when you um, asked? This was actually later on, really yeah, later like on. Like recently? This was like, I want to say when I was like 24. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the stage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you wanted to know, yeah, right? So okay, like, cool. Everybody says it, but I'm like, what is it yeah. that me that everybody says they see it? That's right, that's right. Then I'm like, that she's sitting down they're like this is how she is she's like the woman that i am my mom said mm. is because due to her couple of years in my life mm. wow that she gave me just, just in those, two years that she couple, was an adult exactly and that wow. she's like you know in her late 20s going into her 30s and then mm. the fact that someone that can have that big of an impact to give you a whole different purpose of how you want to have an outlook on life mm -hmm. i just had so much profound respect for my mom that she wanted to carry on what her legacy was it, it, it didn't even matter, you know, oh, I got to do this, I got to do that. My mom's like, no. The thing is, like, the one hard thing I went through was my dad. He was back and forth, India and Canada, because mm -hmm. he was providing for our family. Yeah. For the longest time, I'd never had a connection with my dad. Even That's to this right. day, like, sometimes you go on a drive, we barely talk. Yeah. But, you know, I understood. It took me, even like I, this is recently, yes, I didn't talk to myself. Mm -hmm. I'm like, 
who am I to say he was wrong? Because he took away his time to spend with his kid to go back, to go to Canada, which he couldn't speak a lick of English, yeah, yeah. to make earn money. So we could, I could have every single thing given to me and not, um, you know, struggle or anything. Mm -hmm. Not once in my life, man. Like I lived in a pain, but lived a good life. Mm -hmm. Never not had anything, and I I understood that from a long, uh, like you know, early age that you know what I have everything given to me, but I never asked for more. Cause reason why? Because I didn't need to. I had everything that I wanted. Sure. I, I never had the urge to be like, your mom, I need this place. You guys don't give me this. You guys don't give me that. Yeah. But again, it goes back to me understanding what India taught me growing up here had a whole different outlook. I'm like, you know what? Nah, if, if I want something, I'm going to work for it. I started working when I came here when I was 13 by my own phone, this, that, because my parents' obligation is not to, oh, let me, let me, you know, oh, if I want something, I got to go nag my parents about it. Like, that's not how it is. And, and, and certain people do have the luxury where they can, you know, spoil their kids, which is good. I'm not saying don't do that. But the essence of me understanding if you really want something in life, you got to work for it. Nothing is given to you. Until you don't put yourself in that shoes and realize what that means, you will never understand what that really means. Sure. And for me, that had a huge impact. And then to your dad's point, like, I mean, I don't know your dad, but I would predict he did the best he could. 100%. He gave you the best he had. And that meant six months here, six months there. there. That's yeah. a sacrifice. That's a huge sacrifice. But, but that's that's the best. That for him was the decision he made as an adult. He had and to, he's like, right? this is the best yeah. I can do. Exactly. That's a, that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. It's a little bit ugly sometimes. It is. You miss time with him. He missed time with you too. Exactly. There's hard parts. But the hard parts were worth it. Mm -hmm. He made the call. Yep. Yeah. And that's why I always say, I'm like, I might not understand my dad on a deeper level, but I could never even <clears> feel his <throat> shoes if I tried to. Because the stuff they went through. You will. I mean, you like, will. I, Give yourself time. Yeah, exactly. I you think will. I, 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 that's why I would say, I'm like, always look up to your parents. Because um, they're the epitome of what struggle is and what perseverance is, no matter what state of life it is. Because... Mm -hmm. My dad, man, I, it's funny that like I, I don't, I, I wish like I'm progressing. I do have talks with him now. Before, yeah, I felt like that emotional connection was so I was lacking. Sure. Because of, due to that factor, where my mom was the constant the role, the mother and the father. Can you guys talk as adults now? Oh, 100 percent. If yeah. I told him like your dad, like I think I want to do this. Uh, there's a business opportunity. I can talk to him. Right. And he, then he gives right. me advice. He's like, yeah. okay, what do you know about it? Sure. He's like, let me ask around. Yeah. I can have that. Before that, it was mute in the household yeah, 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 yeah. and it was just him coming home bro like six seven right he comes home eats pass out that's that's what we had from high school to probably like until 24 25 mm -hmm. that's all you have with your parents sure because all they're doing is work 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 yeah but yeah. that also taught you something it taught I mean, me those, something. those are the quiet nights quiet evenings uh, well I, mean, I had i had the same so i'll speak from my own experience yeah. so my father worked in a factory Mm -hmm. And he worked in Edmonton, so so I had him in my life yeah. as a child. And uh, he's passed away now, over 10 years ago. But the experiences and memories that I have in the evening time yeah. was like either he comes home at 6 or 7, yeah. same thing. Yeah. There's a meal, there's a beg, beg yeah. and there's a sleep, right? Yep. <laughs> uh, there's not much like socializing. And often, for a large chunk of time, actually he worked the night shift, so mm -hmm. he would come home at actually 2 and we wouldn't see him in the evenings yeah. because when we come home from school, he's already gone to work. So there's absence, right? There's a feeling of absence from a familial and from a personal level that feels like absence. Mm -hmm. So I experienced that. Yeah. And upon reflection, that's true, but also there's a feeling of provision. Mm -hmm. And and like um, our house is the bounty in our home yeah. partly existed because of, because of the, the absence. Yeah. That's, that's what it took. Mm -hmm. um, and then and then later on in life when it was closer to his retirement and yeah. stuff it, like it was late we had adult conversations late like <laughs> really late after marriage yeah, well. right like i was married had a kid and then <laughs> and then that's when it started yeah. it was really late well, and that's okay that's, no, that's just normal. how it went yeah, and fine. i don't think it's normal it's i think, no, actually think it's very abnormal i don't think but, it's like but it just line. it just went yeah. that's just what it was and that's that's okay um so yeah if you can have adult conversations with your dad now that's kind of like in, in our community, that's pretty huge. cool. And that's, that's pretty uh, healthy <laughs> level of adaptation. Yeah. And you, you, I would cherish it. It sounds like you I are. Do, yeah. yeah. So I'll ask those questions. And if he challenges you or if he supports you or if he says, I got you on this one, but not on this one, one yeah. it's cool. Like that's part of the journey. That's part of the storyline. <laughs> right. 
And uh, no, how about for you? Well, my uh, eyes kind of like flipped with that, right? Yeah. It's flipped? It's, yeah. it's, 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 it's different. It's, yeah. For him, it was his mom. For yeah. Me, my dad. Okay, yeah. Uh, I mean, there's a long story behind my family, but... Sure. Well, that's was, why I respect it, though. Yeah, it was, it was more divided. So, of mm-hmm. course, my dad had to play the mother, okay. father role. Yeah. So, he, he... I mean, he was very... The thing with him, he was very sensitive and yes, shy and yes. that sort. So, mm. of course, like, I mean, they didn't really discuss about emotions. Sure. And, you know, the the impact of, you know, if the absence of the father, father yeah. parenthood, whatever it may be mm-hmm. with a child. It was actually around the same age, around 24, okay. 25 years old. <laughs> so that's when it happened? That's when you started to have adult conversations? I would say so around that time yeah. when I started more just having uh, more deeper thoughts and like yeah. what's the importance why is this like why sure. do we talk about all this stuff right because yeah. yeah. um, even with him like when he first came to Canada he what did he do he was at a butcher shop and then at night he delivered pizzas mm-hmm. and then what I Two would jobs. do yeah, yeah. Okay. so at night what do I do Take I would long. do is uh, I would I would hang out with him in the car while I drop some pizzas. Yeah, yeah. And he buy me that those little mini pizzas there, yeah, yes, four slices. Yes, the classic. And yeah. I would just pass out in the yeah. back seat. Yeah. Um. So I always had a strong right. connection with my dad. Yeah, you had yeah. the bond. Yeah, okay. I had that really strong bond. And yeah. he, it just grew over time to the point where, because I mean, even for him, I mean, for for anybody, right? Like, just talking to your parents about emotions, just mm-hmm. stress, and all that sort of depression is very minimal mm-hmm. um and then it was to the point where it was like 25 i was like hey like what's going on i was like we don't talk about this when i yeah. started understanding the issues within our culture um you was, know, he, like, was he receptive he i mean yeah he he, he was he was sh- he was hesitant at first sure that's okay uh, yeah. which makes sense that's right okay. it's, it's yeah. comes so with be it. new to him right yeah, yeah, yeah but, but did uh, he come around Okay. Did he come around? Oh yeah, yeah. Now, now we talk about everything. That's we cool. talk about everything. That's cool, yeah. he, t- he, t- he tells me he's like, oh, he's like, how's the dating world? Like, oh. <laughs> you know, we get, we, You're we like, get, Dad, look, just swipe over here. Yeah. Yeah, Let's just, have a look. They just keep coming. <laughs> <laughs> this is where we live so, now. Wow. He talks about. He even talks about like to the point now where he's open before he wasn't open about mm-hmm. having like let's say if i was dating someone outside the culture mm-hmm. yeah. different background was he, he was like he, he was opposed like, no. he was okay, opposed before yeah. but now he's like he's like as long as she understands the culture and our importance of our culture and why we're trying okay. to carry forward mm-hmm. okay if she has if she hasn't understand she's like, he's like he wants back. he wants to respect yeah. he wants the okay. respect right because okay. yeah. i mean our culture is dying real quick okay Right. Yeah. So it's not being carried forward. So. No, even with your dad, I feel like the one thing I do respect about what your story is is um, how open he is. Because the thing is, like a lot of time when you go through experience, you can have resentment towards certain things. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and from what the talks that we always had, you never had that way where dad's like, "Nah, man, be careful, da da da, this that." But obviously, like the main advice that he gives you, those when, you know, you take into account. But he never ever told you, but like, "Yo, more be careful. They're conniving. They're this that." You know what I mean? So. Yeah. For you, like, did you you never experienced that, right? Like with your with your father in regards to that, like when it comes to dating life, because you know having been through what you guys have, it, it's not easy yeah. to have a sometime a positive outlook. Was on there life. was there was your mother in the picture? No, no. So both uh, my parents were divorced. Okay. So that yeah. happened. How long ago was that? that? Was about twelve years ago. Yeah. Mm. So that was when I was right when I was about to turn eighteen, and my sister was about fourteen years old. Yeah. So, I mean, this is going <clears throat> more in depth, but for, 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 for me, I mean, of course I had to start learning how to cook and all that sort, because I was the older sibling, yeah. you know, trying to help with my dad. So my dad, I mean, he literally had to start everything over because we had to move out okay. of apartment, uh, move to the apartment, so on and so forth. So, so, you, so you, after the age of 18, you had non-nuclear family mm. for a long time. Yeah. And okay. it really, after that, I mean, when I started like, you know, started, um, thinking about like okay well, what's what's so important about a family yeah. right why why motherhood mother and father so important and you know that, that led into you know what type you know the type of pe- type of woman that I want in my life right mm. it's just make, like it's cuz what i see is like i'm not saying every woman or even man right it just seems like having a nuclear fa- family is very undervalued nowadays nowadays it's so quick to give up right? but would you say you sometimes do tend to cast judgment because due to what your father went through would you say would you certainly like to a certain extent you're hard on the person that you're sitting across that you just met that you feel like based on what my experience is in my family household mm-hmm. this is what i want and it can't be other than that do you feel like sometimes that that put that 
oh, yeah. comes in the way. Oh yeah, definitely. Then there's how do you balance factors. that? Like, there's, there's other factors to consider. Yeah. One factor is you have your wishes. Yeah. You have yeah, your, yeah, yeah. your uh, wants and needs, of yeah. course, that's fair. Yeah. Nuclear family is, is a, who, a who doesn't, dynamic. who's gonna fight with that? Yeah. That's a beautiful yeah. thing, right? It's a beautiful, yeah. uh, when it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. On the flip side, sometimes people are battling things, yeah. whatever that may be. Yeah. Uh, alcoholism, drug addiction, mental mm-hmm. health. Maybe they're just with the wrong person, mm-hmm. even if they try. Maybe yeah, they have yeah. tried. Like, there's many possibilities. And sometimes the answer is actually to separate. And that's actually the best that's answer. Way, yeah. so not always and hopefully not. But sometimes that is the reality. It's kind of yeah. ugly. But it's true. I don't know how that was in your situation. Yeah. But, but sometimes that's the case. So, so let's be honest, we don't know, right? Like it's a risk and, it and we, we commit to, uh, you know, I've committed to my wife and she has committed to me mm-hmm. and we have, you know, when we first met and yeah. we, it was early in marriage, we didn't know. We have faith, <laughs> yeah. we believe and we committed to a process. You asked earlier about like, uh, you mentioned um, working through Two things. things yeah. yeah, so there was certainly like a commitment to we will work through things. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, you know, many people commit to that and some of them work out <laughs> some of them and some of them yeah, don't. Some don't. So you yeah. just try and, no, and then, then faith takes you so far and effort takes you so far and yeah. love takes you so far and uh, societal pressure takes you mm-hmm. so far, so far yeah. and then sometimes it doesn't and then the, you kind of the straw that breaks the camel's back yeah and uh, unfortunately then it's it, it means separating sometimes yeah yeah no it's true, it's true. yeah and i mean kind of piggybacking off of that i think when you do have you know stability when you have a little bit around you know whether whatever maybe whether it's you know a single uh parent household whether it's two parents household like you know how do you so when it comes to your businesses so uh, if, uh, if people didn't know um Raju owns four facilities as we know as you spoke before about uh for pivotal physio for me i always think like oh running so many businesses it it puts a lot of pressure in understanding from your counter partner what mm-hmm. you're working towards yes good thing is like they might not vision the same vision that you have mm-hmm. for your career how do you balance them because for me sometimes like or oh, it's just easier to go with a nine to five job Hey, after after work, yeah. we'll catch a nice dinner. We spend time together and call yeah. it a day. Cause thing is, yeah. it's not easy, man. Yeah, there's, I mean, so the entrepreneurial types, mm-hmm. like people that are just business minded and and want to pursue those types of things, typically they're more risk tolerant. Yeah, mm-hmm. typically they're more. Um, um, well, okay, the, the, the <laughs> nice way to say it is they're risk tolerant. Yeah. <laughs> and then the, the nasty way to say it is they can't, they like being their own boss well, yeah. and they can't be like, bothered to yeah. be around other people. <laughs> so it depends on your perspective, right? Exactly. But yeah, there, there's a certain level of just self awareness, right? So, yeah. like, that's the self awareness part. And if you have self awareness, then you can share that with others mm. your friends, your children, your partner, mm. the business people, the people that you work with, and you share it. And that's the truth. This is my truth. That's right. right. Yeah. And so if, and, and that goes both ways. And my mm-hmm. wife's a teacher. Yeah. She has a oh, government okay. funded job. She works at Harry Ainley High School. Mm. She's a teacher, mm. right? So she, her self-awareness is, I love to teach. teach. Mm. I love to educate. I love to uh, impact the youth. Yeah. Mm. This is her truth. Mm-hmm. So, so I need her to share that with me. Like I need to know <laughs> to that yeah. in order to support it. Exactly. Right. And then conversely, I need to know my self-awareness in order for her to support it. And then the question is, do you support it? Right? (laughs) So, so she does, she's very, very supportive. In fact, when I first went into business, I had fear. Right. Mm -hmm. And then she was one of the key people that said, no, put that down, Mm -hmm. have the fear, have healthy fear, but turn down the dial (laughs) and and more so turn up the dial of bravery. Mm. Right, so so she's like manipulate the dials here, yeah. The, you know, sometimes go, go you ahead. got to you got to yeah. manipulate. That's the, yeah. that's a healthy conversation. It's a yeah. very healthy awareness, and but think about that. This person said that to me, mm. which helped propel the next act. That exactly, quite a huge set of actions. Yeah. So yeah, she's very supportive, mm. and if if one wasn't, It'd be so so it, let's go extreme. Let's say she just wasn't supportive. Yeah, it's kind of a deal breaker. Like it is. I'm, oh, yeah. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> right because like that's just the reality if she yeah. says no or or like you know early on if it was like just a deal breaker then things would have gone a different way yeah. Yeah. something would have changed mm. or the other side if i'm belligerent mm. if i abuse that yeah. or you're supportive i'm going to work all the time, time. i'm always going to be See. away I'm like, yeah. it's, it's very extreme and i don't recognize the, this partnership 
as well, mm -hmm. then of course th that's not healthy. Uh, well, that's I have true. to. I have to be aware of this, right? Yeah. So then that requires conversation and understanding and it changes. When it's just me and her, it's a little bit easier. It's easier. Yeah. When there's some children, it's oh, a yeah. little harder. Yeah, exactly. And then and also like the the interests change. Now you kind of want to feel like a dad and you want to <laughs> do certain things with your kids and uh, you know like the interest things change over time. So yeah. constant communication yeah. and, and constant respect mm -hmm. and um, and you know then there, there's some luck yeah, is there, there is too, right? There's some luck mm -hmm. and and some hard work. Of yeah. course, yeah. And I mean, as you said, being lucky is having that luck is, but you put yourself in you know position to be lucky. Mm. You know? Yeah, it, but yeah, I, I agree. Like you do all the right things and yeah. you work hard and exactly, network and, and, and all the right things. But but in the end, you still, I still acknowledge that luck plays an aspect. Luck is a factor. It is. Yeah. Some it of some is. of it is that. Too. It is. It is. Right. But there's a piece. At the end of the day, that propelled you to have a career that you have today. You know. Yeah, it's cool, man. Like the career is. Like for those, they, I don't know if the, if the audience is such that there's people interested in becoming physios, <laughs> but if there is, it's a wonderful career. Mm. Uh, you have the chance to impact people's lives. You get the chance to work with patients on either pain relief or um, improving their function or getting back to sport. So, yeah. And like, it's usually like, I meet people when they're typically not doing perfectly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm or terrible yeah and then we get to transition into much better, better yeah. or like uh, you know even better than they were before mm. sometimes they actually finish physio better than when, when they, they were before they were injured yeah. that's pretty cool right so there's there's opportunity to change the curve and to to inspire people along the way build relationships mm -hmm. connect with people yeah. um you know, there's the physiotherapy part, like the technical skills. Yeah. That's a beautiful thing. It's very yeah. curious, very scientific. It's very, uh, um, there's an art to it, right? Yeah. But there's also like the, the, all the soft side. And the soft side is, you know, um, who gets coached, understanding them, yeah. helping them solve a problem, mm -hmm. making a connection, bonding. There's a whole other piece of that journey that's, yeah. that's uh, that went, like at the end of the day, if I look at myself in the mirror, did I have impact? that was positive in the world in this day? The answer is easily yes. yes yeah. You feel good about that, right? So it's a gratifying career. It's a direct impact right, it. to patients. Whereas other jobs, uh, like if I was, um, um, I don't know, like an accountant, Accountant is also a very that curious job, right? That is that you? Okay, so so that like a wonderful job, lots of math, very detailed oriented, yeah. have to be attentive. But if you're not forward facing to the client, you may not have that direct Direction, validation. Yeah. It's indirect. Mm -hmm. What does the company do that then has impact on the world? Yeah. Still impactful. It, is, it can yeah. still be very, very positive if it's the right company. company exactly. But it's a little indirect. It's mm -hmm. a little bit less. Yep. So selfishly, I get the validation you know, day to day. Day to day, yeah. Whereas if I was an accountant, I think I would it's get different. it week to week or, or quarterly or when the company did something impactful, I would get it in a different way. Different. Yeah. yeah. So it has to fit the personality and exactly. it has to fit your wants and needs. And yeah. Yeah. I Some think, are more introverted. They're more like, let me sit in an office. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> this is yeah. my zone of success. Zone of success. Yeah, yeah. Right? It, it's not me. Like I walk yeah. downtown in, in, in the corporate world. I feel very uncomfortable. Comfortable. Mm. It is. I feel like I want to get out. Because like, you yeah. can't wait to leave. It's, you know? it's just I learned that the vibes are not right. Yeah. And and the one thing I saw, I think this was la I don't know if it was last year. Uh, I saw your trip to Ecuador. Yeah. Uh, was cool. it Kamata organization? How do you? Kamta. Kamta. Yeah. yeah. So the and Canadian from, Association of Medical Teams abroad. Yeah. yeah and then I, 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 when I saw it, I'm like, damn. The thing is, like, it's so funny that you say you, you work directly. It gives you like direct, you know. No, not in, I guess you can say gratification and understanding. Is, yeah. I'm improving, helping improve their health, their fitness, yeah. you know. And when I saw that, that you went down there um, for a greater cause than than it's just you. Mm -hmm. It's not it, that wasn't that trip wasn't yeah. money oriented. Oh, let me see. Oh, I, I got to do this because it'll open my door, more doors for yeah. you. Mm -hmm. yeah. And for me, I, I have my like, wow. I'm like, that's something I want to do in my future. Yeah. I want to mm -hmm. go to an organization that helps people in need that might not have that ability right. to. Or, or start your own. Or start, yeah, start or start own. my own, you yeah. know, because yeah. it's so funny that you say that. I tell my, I tell my girlfriend all the time, I'm like, yeah. one of the things that I always have, I want to do is start my own not for profit organization sure. when it comes to sports mm -hmm. okay. in our own community. Yes. Do you want to do it in India or in Edmonton? Here and in India. Because okay. back yeah. home, I yeah. grew up in, I'll tell you guys, we had this basketball, this big net. Yeah. It's one of those when you buy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's all I had until I came here. Mm -hmm. But thing is, back home, there was no basketball net. Yeah. Now there is, now they are sure. more, but still, yeah. nobody's, if you, go, tell me one pen you go to, and then you'll find some sort of rec center that people can go to. Sure. 
What if you could go back to uh, India yeah. and start an organization? I would love to that, one day. Uh, that offers, like you said, you were bothered by the impoverished children. Yeah. So mm -hmm. like poverty bothers yeah. you. So you'd like to have an impact on, mm -hmm. on that population. So education is part of it. Yeah. Like what if you could give them schools? I mean, that, that'd be and then and then sports are part of the schooling. Part of, exactly. But you can't just give them sports without a classroom, classroom. and clad school. Yep. So you need to give them and, and there's some fundamentals around where are they going to live and, mm. and like there's a big project there. It is. So that's a huge project. And you you might need some help, but, it, but you can do it. <laughs> you like, know, it's possible. It's a huge project, oh, yeah. and sport can be part of it. You know, in Edmonton, it's a lot easier. In it Edmonton, is. there's the, you you know, depending on who you're you. who you're targeting. Exactly. Sure. I mean, I think you could have you could have that impact here too. It would be a larger impact in the village where people actually reality. need it. Yep. Yeah, that's true. I mean, th th one of the inspiration that came for me was this LeBron, like his uh, Akron schools that yeah. he has. Yeah. And think about it, like, what is he putting forward? He's putting positive environment for the kids to succeed. Yes. And he's and he's giving initiative to the kids. We're like, listen, if you mm -hmm. get oh certain uh, grades, this that, mm. you have scholarships going into college. That's such a yeah. boost for mm -hmm. a person. Imagine if I'm sitting there, like, man, my first year I get this much scholarship. Yeah. That's such a good thing to strive towards. So stuff like that, like yeah. you know, I, it, sometimes it does give me goosebumps. So I like, think like that. That's a good example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because. That, that example is so profound, mm -hmm. right? We have <laughs> one of the most iconic, iconic celebrities yeah, and sports athletes in the world. world. Yeah. So there's billions of people, one of the most iconic. So already there's heavy you know, promotion yeah. and celebrity <laughs> and all the rest of it around mm -hmm. him yeah. and doing something impactful exactly. and doing it in a community. So it's kind of inspiring. It's his own hometown. Mm -hmm. There's some nostalgia. There's lots of like storyline pieces there. Yeah. And it's impactful to... Was, is it thousands of kids? Thousands Probably of kids. thousands yep, of kids, thousands right? Of kids, yeah. So thousands of families are getting benefit yeah. from this, uh, uh, this, this move. And the school but let's also re be real. He has way more influence than way us. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he has way more money, yeah. way more power, way he's more influence, and that's okay. Yeah. So he's leading the way. Exactly. Let's say he's one of the leaders. Yep. Yeah. Wonderful. What are leaders supposed to do? Inspire others. Mm. So you felt inspired. Yep. You felt the goosebumps. Yep. He succeeded. Yep. Yeah. Right? He succeeded with those thousand kids, but also if you have impact on 10, yep. he impacted 10, 10 more, that he doesn't yep. even know about. Exactly. Exactly. Right? So that's where the ripple effects mm. starts to have power. And you're just one person. Yep. You impact 10. There's going to be, look, impacts 10. These three other guys impact 10. Thing. And that's yeah. that's now like hundreds or thousands Thousand. or millions yep. that he doesn't even know about exactly. that yeah. he's impacted. So that's that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then guess what happens when you inspire 10? And there's going to be three more. So there's going to be 30 yeah. more. And, and, and you know, like it's this a, is how yeah, it goes, right? Effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I was so, so do story. something. With, I think obviously we have to recognize our limitations. Exactly. Yeah. So in this room, we have Edmonton and or India influence. Yeah. Maybe yeah. a little bit. And, you know, I luckily I've been able to go to Ecuador a few times due to the other people that have mm -hmm. invited me and, and I've been able Good to go. So, so yeah, like it will grow. But right now, today, yeah. you can impact 10 Boy. somehow. You can. So this year, impact 10. Hmm. That's a reasonable goal. Yep, it is. And, and that will give you inspiration, give you purpose. And, and, you know, this is just my opinion. But the, so the reason I went, the, the why yep. behind that was I was feeling there was a part of me that was empty. Hmm. There was a part of me that was not quite uh, doing what it was supposed to do. Yep. I, I, I identified a gap, right? And, and I wasn't sure what, what does this mean? What's <laughs> happening with this gap here? I'm uncomfortable, yeah. right? So I started to do reflecting and journaling and reading and, and trying to figure it out. And, the, and that process led me to identify that I need to do something that is, uh, I wanted, I, I came up with a theme mm -hmm. that kind of uh, took a lot of time, but mm -hmm. uh, outside of Canada was one of the pieces. Uh, third world nation was one of the pieces. Uh, I really wanted to go to India. I just mm. didn't know how to make it happen. Yeah. And maybe I will yeah. at some point. At some point I hope yeah. that I will. But that wasn't in the cards yet. Uh, and I didn't want to have any money attached. The, like mm. the, I didn't yeah. want to draw an income from the process because that would potentially bias the process. Exactly. So I have a time and a place to earn income, of course. Yeah. I need to do that. I want to do that. But this was meant to be not that. Different, yep. This was meant to be a, like a hard divide. Yep. So yep. those are the key elements I was looking for. Mm. And, and I was lucky enough to find this organization. Other people that I knew had gone through it before. They recommended it. There's an application process. And it, luckily, it led to a good path. Yep. Mm. But that might be different for you. Exactly. Like you define your own, your why, whatever the why is. Mm -hmm. But if the why is sports, 
for impoverished kids, you can do that like now. You yeah. can do it this year. Yeah, yeah. And so maybe in a small capacity yeah. and you grow from there. And you'll meet people that want to do it and others that are like-minded. And like it will lead to things that you don't know of. Oh, yeah. You don't realize it yet, but just do it. Start it. That's true. And well, it, just, it will lead network. to something. Even yeah. with the network, it's a lot easier here too, right? You have the support system. You have people that you know of. Absolutely. And it just, and yeah. just grows, right? And then yeah. six guys from your team might yeah. join you. That's yeah. true. Like the, you, it, it, things will happen. That I don't know what they are. No, I know, I know good will happen. It's like you gotta. Yeah. I mean, you gotta understand. But like, you gotta start. Like, it's so funny that we talk about like our why. Yeah. Me and Mook like experience with this podcast. Mm-hmm. Amount of kids that do reach out to younger and. Yeah. They're like, man, because of you guys, I've seen your daddy and pug makes mm-hmm. me want to keep our daddy and pug. Yeah. And that's one kid. It's I'm symbolic. like, you know what? I, did, I I feel like I'm living my why reason why I want to have this podcast to understand. Be like, okay, if you are struggling with this, this represents who we are. And if for that kid that reached out to me, they're like, man, because of you, I wanted to keep this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I made an impact to that person. And did you expect that? I did not expect. No, not it's one a surprise, day. right? Surprise. Yeah, yeah. Mok, me and Mooks talk yeah. about it, it all the time. It's interesting because we just never. I mean, it's what we're saying. We, <laughs> we never thought ex- about it. We just never expected it because yeah. we're just like we're just doing this for fun. We don't even know who's gonna listen. We're gonna to bring this different stuff. talks. But yeah. then it was yeah. like, oh man, like their kids actually like reaching out there, like, hey, I appreciate you guys like actually putting yourself in front of a camera. Sure. Right? Yeah, you're creating and the symbol. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And it was just, I'm. It's more like humble in a sense. <laughs> I'm more of like. Just thinking like business mind, I'm like, I just okay, what what can we do next and all yeah, that sort. Yeah. But it's interesting just having that different aspect of like, oh, like you're making a huge impact on on a kid, that's, right? You know, that yeah. might be struggling. It's directly per, us, yeah. di- directly affecting the personality and so that sort. So, yeah, and some of their decisions, and exactly. Decisions yeah. too, right. So, yeah. but yeah, like even like even just talking about like what you guys <laughs> talking about like seva. Right? At the end of the day, it is seva, right? Self serve. You're trying to impacting other people's people's uh, lives in, mm-hmm. in other countries and cities and stuff of that sort but like even we were having this discussion before it was just the confusion of selfless serve right um, the previous podcast that we had I was you know we were talking to one of our guests and it was just that some people going to go into Seba doing something for other people yeah. but not focusing on themselves first Mm. putting in the work on self-development you know their own development oh, stuff I see. and they kind of like get that confusion of when they do seva they have the expectancy of receiving something in return okay right so i wanted to get your perspective on like you know now that you're you're at that point where you know you're able to help others but what do you think people should do in regards to you know with that confusion yeah because like i think what he's stating is like a lot of people do have that but like oh i helped you but you're not giving because you have that a lot of time but like yeah. but i helped you though how are you saying oh, no to me they want to say like they owe them a favor kind exactly of them a favor so the sense. purpose behind yeah. the selfless oh, act is backed up by oh you owe me now oh yeah yeah, yeah so that's not cool it's not coming from <laughs> it's not coming from a selfless act it's that's like not, that's not cool that's just like a sounds like a lie it yeah, is, yeah, yeah. No, it is. <laughs> i mean if that's if it's yeah i guess let's go back to intentions yeah so if the intention is pure yeah. then just let it be pure yeah. if the intention is um, hey, Mook, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this for you. Yeah. I know you have this need. I'm going to do this for you. Mm. Then I should be real with you. Yep. right? I should yep. say, hey, Mook, I want to do this for you, but I kind of need something in return. return. How yeah. do you feel about this idea mm. in return? It's and you might say, yeah, that, that sounds fair, Raj. Let's do it. And then, okay, let's go. We just get to business, right? Yeah. But if I like hide it or don't talk about it or like expect it and don't communicate, that's, like, that's on me. Yeah. I, I got to do that. It happens right. a lot in our in our community because, like, I, I in our family, I have been right. through where, yeah, a family you struggled with brothers, sisters, this, that. They're like, oh, but I did this for you. Oh, you were talking generationally. I'm telling you, oh, okay. generationally, yeah, yeah, yeah. but this also, but also, it's just um, like what I'm saying is, like what we've talked about right now. It's true, right? Like, but I think there's a deeper, deeper side of it where it's just because you have not worked on yourself enough. You're you're looking for that that attention of I did something for you, I should receive something in return. Right. So let's let's flip it the other way yeah. for a second. So I think what you're saying is there's perhaps a um, area an insecurity or what I won't even define it. There's just yeah. something that can be improved. Yeah. Right. In that human. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Fair enough. Let's say that's true. Mm-hmm. The flip side of it is is what maybe that person like so so i'm asking the question what are the things that the other person does mm-hmm. or what are the values that the other person holds mm-hmm. that does not have that gap 
Like, do they meditate? Yeah. Do they pray? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do they have uh, yogi-like behaviors? <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. just asking. Like, yeah. you know, what is the difference, right? So yeah. paint the other side of it. Yeah. Who's that person, and what do they do? What's the, what do they behave like? See, Help that, me understand it. Th- yeah. That's huge. What he just said right there. Oh, no, it's true. Understanding yeah. the person across from you, mm. and honing in on like, okay, majority of his acts was as quote unquote he says selfless acts mm. are coming from a place of insecurities or something to get you back at mm. because they always come time in life where they feel like oh like oh you think i'm this or that like you coming at me but when i helped oh you were at your lowest i helped you they use it against you yeah, yeah that's yeah. not cool it shouldn't be weaponized it shouldn't but think a lot of no. people do in our community we it's weaponize it I, I, I think like it's 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 weaponized by some mm-hmm. and and in our, you know we live in our community, community yeah. so i think we, we see, see we see it, it yeah, in our community exactly. I would think I don't know for sure, but I think it's probably the same in many Any communities. Other cultures, yeah. Similarities. Yeah. I don't think it's like yeah. Punjabi focused. No, no, no. no. That's true. But I mean, I live in it, and you live in it, so <laughs> let's talk about that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, there are people that will weaponize or uh, like the, the the more extreme example, <laughs> the classic one. I helped you immigrate. To I here. helped sponsor oh. you. Like you've all heard <laughs> don't this story, get me right? started on yeah. that. So, so we all have lived this yeah. this thing, right? I brought you yeah. here. Yeah, I brought you here, and then <laughs> and then thirty years later, you didn't wash my dish, and now I'm gonna throw it in your face. Like it's it's very ugly, and but it's but it but if it's so common, if yeah. it's so pervasive, we can laugh about it because it's like so common. common we can yeah. make a meme about it. Yeah. But why is it so pervasive? We all know it. Right away, you both understood what I was talking about. Yeah. Right? Why? So why is that? Because there's a cultural undertone mm. that that was the reality of a certain time, time yeah. in the 70s and the 80s, 80s largely, yeah. maybe yeah. in the yeah. 90s a little bit. 80s, That's yeah. when it was happening. It was, yeah. So so what did those people do? They came, uh, you know. Okay, so I won't give you my example. But <laughs> somebody came. Somebody right? came. Hypothetical. And, so <laughs> somebody came, and and that was the first person, mm-hmm. and usually the one that was kind of like it was the hardest for them. Yeah. And guess who it's on to sponsor. It's on that person. Then, yep. So they're already having a hard time. If I'm defending them, yep. they're already having a hard time. And they feel obligation. Juggle to bang everybody. Aja, aja, aja. And they do all this stuff. Yeah, it's yeah. hard. It Let's is. acknowledge this. Validate that person. Yep. They did a lot of stuff. So, yep. um, Omid's dad is an example of that. Mm-hmm. He was the one, mm-hmm. right? So, so th- these examples did those things. Mm. And then... If the other four or five members of the family come, let's say three are successful and get settled, let's say one is kind of having a hard time mm-hmm. for whatever reason. Later on, this person might need something, and maybe they don't know how to voice it. Mm-hmm. They kind of expect it. Yeah, expected. The expected. communication's not clean, mm-hmm. yeah. right? But they also went through just a hard, hard time. time. Like yeah. I, I think there's a, a place for forgiveness I there. Agree. And there's a place for like, yo, simmer down, healthy boundaries, <laughs> yeah. healthy boundaries. Like, I think it's okay to have that too. Yeah, now yeah. we're lucky because we didn't live that. You know, exactly. we, we were all, you, know, you came as a child. child yeah. So nobody sponsored exactly. you. Like you came as a kid. Mm-hmm. It's a bit different, right? I was born in Canada. You were born, born in Canada. So we were lucky. Mm-hmm. We didn't live that ugly part. Yeah. And so we get to be in the next generation where we can laugh a little bit about it, about it yeah. we can reflect on it because yeah. we have time so we get to look at it and say this is what went well this is what didn't go they well will, we get to yeah. analyze we set it a podcast and talk about <laughs> it it's luxurious it is there's yeah. such luxury yep. yeah. but then we can also learn from it and we our expectation, expectation. is we should do better we do better yeah. and guess what my kid's expectation is dad sucks <laughs> I'm gonna do better <laughs> yeah. it's, it's generational right yeah, so that's, yeah, that's, that's okay so we laugh about it we celebrate every generation does it yeah. Matt they didn't mop you they're crazy you know? <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then they, you know, they, they think they claim they can do better I yeah. claim I can do better and yeah. my kids will claim the same thing yeah. that's beautiful child do better than no yeah, problem Kadija, go yeah, for it good, yeah. like, let's try yeah. let's try I'll encourage it <laughs> and you have a little laugh with me you make fun of me heckle me go for it mm. if that's what it costs have some fun. <laughs> go for it it's okay and, and you know I'll, I'll eat it it's yeah. okay right? it's okay yeah, yeah but our parents were in a different, different time yeah, and they, they came through harder experiences uh, you, you guys have talked about on the podcast before mental health wasn't discussed alcohol alcoholism was pervasive mm-hmm. they were self-medicating there was a lot of hard parts yeah. there and, and and let's talk about women we're mm-hmm. all men here we, mm. we're, I'm not I shouldn't even be trying but let me try to talk about women here my mom is an example mm-hmm. of that generation. Yep. Not much of a voice, mm-hmm. not rec- not acknowledged. Yep. Um, secondary, like 
you know, patriarchal society mm -hmm. and, and women were having to be home and all the rest cool, of that you know, definition. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like we look at it now and we're like, that's kind of weird. That's ugly. We don't, we don't believe mm -hmm. in that. Yeah. We believe in more equality and, and, and supporting women. And I want my daughters to go to school. And I'm encouraging them to be leaders. leaders yeah. So why am I doing that? Because mm -hmm. that's what I believe. That's the environment I was growing up in. Mm -hmm. And, that, and now I, I, it's, it's snowballed. Yeah. But, but our mothers and our aunties and all these other people, they might not never have said it. Yep. Maybe they said it, but it wasn't, they didn't have a voice. They didn't have yeah. a voice. Nobody was their voice. Exactly. So they, like both the men and the women had different stuff going on. It was hard. It right? is. Yeah. So, so like, yeah, we can laugh and we can now <laughs> do better and so on and all the rest of it. But yeah, so going back to the point of your, your comment, I do believe some weaponize it yep. and, and it, that can be ugly and there's some healthy boundaries that should be drawn. Mm -hmm. But also uh, on one hand, maybe some forgiveness is entitled to them because they just didn't have the tools, tools to yes, do better. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, I can't hold them accountable if they don't have the tools. Mm -hmm. And then also, let's also acknowledge there's a whole pile of people that don't weaponize no, it, yep. that yep. are actually very beautiful mm -hmm. about it. Genuine. And they, they, they're loving and they're kind, they're genuine. It impacts we have people, when I said that, both of your eyes lit up. Yeah. You have yeah. those people in your life too. You do, yeah. So there's both, right? We should, we should learn from them exactly. as well. They're the ones that have the capacity mm -hmm. We could, they're our teachers. Yep. They're the ones we should be students of. Yep. Right? And that's okay. We learn from them. Yeah. And that's and you know what you said about the, the whole mother thing. I think um, that's something that we don't talk enough. Because the thing is, like, nowadays, it's easy. Like, for us to look back at it, but like, you know, like, what is that? Yeah. Like, us getting flowers on Valentine's Day. They're only small gestures. Yeah. You, as you spoke about before, oh, grabbing someone a coffee or mm -hmm. a small thing, let me drop off lunch those things weren't a thing yeah and at the end of the day those mothers the aunties they have emotions they have feelings and when yeah. those are neglected 20 constantly yeah. but obviously that wasn't due to the fact that oh i don't give a shit about them it was just mm -hmm. the fact that they were the struggle of their own mm -hmm. on their fatherhood um side yeah. now as you said spoke about we have the luxury to talk about these conversations because mm -hmm. yes. we don't have the same struggles that yeah, they went through right yeah. so i always tell people i'm like you might be hard on your dad or like your mother was to a certain extent where a lot of the times, you know, the time does go hard on like the, with the dad, be like, to see I need the mommy to see I ain't oh, she will like that. Yeah. But the conversation is not presented to like your dad, why don't you do this thing? Like I understand like before you in a struggle, but now we're, we're able to have these talks. It starts from a conversation rather than demonizing them, be like, no, yeah. you're a bad father. Yeah. I, so, I and some that. and some do it like yeah. it, it's happening, but it's slow, right? It is. Yeah. yeah. Um, so here I'm gonna I'm gonna take it one step further. <laughs> your next guest, yeah. female. I'm not joking. Yeah. Your next guest should be a female. I tell him, right? Your I like visual. I, I know it's against like the name, but, <laughs> no, but, no, that, no. but the, if the point like depends on the point, but but you can edit this out, Adriel, if you need to later. <laughs> but, but if, uh, like if the point is to bring to light knowledge points yeah. on both sides and, and opportunity, so you you had unexpected people yeah. say you impacted me positively mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. you've had but they were all males mm. right is that true yeah so yeah. so, yeah, so let's flip it how how what if you had two or three guests that were females mm -hmm. that could speak the voice and that were have uh, what they want to say yeah and you celebrate what they want to say you know and, and then now you have a, a, your audience is perhaps a little different and it's presenting the other side it that, is. That may, yeah. i'm trying to speak for that side but yeah. i'm not living it they, you need someone who's living it. Who's actually well, living it? This is an interesting part. <laughs> Majority of viewers are females. Oh, wow. It's okay. very interesting. I didn't know that. We, we didn't expect it either. Yeah. And, and I, even Amber was telling me about it. I, was like, I sent him a screenshot of this yeah. girl. She's like, okay. you know what? Yeah. I understand my partner a little bit better given what you guys talk about wow. in regards to certain aspect of sure, it. And sure. I showed him the screenshot. Yeah. I'm like, yo. I'm like, hmm. We didn't, I think it's like, we don't expect this though. We don't, we don't expect And when we that. actually have these talks, like they understand like, because... They're in the dating world. They might yes. be struggling to understand a man from a different understanding. Sure. And if you have a voice that impacts you differently, or mm -hmm. you watch the podcast, but mm -hmm. this have impact, but like, oh man, let me reevaluate yeah. what I yeah. thought about a certain yeah. person. And and as you said, majority of them are women yeah. that listen to it. So so let's flip <laughs> it. Weird. You got three females coming up next. The guys are going to start reaching out. <laughs> I mean, that, they're going to be like, oh, now all of a sudden you open up the light bulbs. Yeah. Now I understand. Yeah. Hopefully that happens. Right? No, but, I, yeah. but I do hope, like, I mean, we haven't tapped into, like, relationships and all that sort. Mm. So, of course, we'll, we'll, of course, bring on female, <laughs> you know, um, guests and all that sort. But it's just, like, like, kind of going back to just 
family itself, right? Because what's right? Family. Family, yeah. Right? It's just family itself, like having a mother, father, and then kids, mm. and all that sort. Even just now, in today's, we have like red pill and all that sort. That's kind of just confusing the roles of mother and father in a household, right? Like, because <clears throat> then there's like, okay, you know what? You're 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 a female. You shouldn't be ed well educated. You should be, you know, you're gonna turn masculine of that sort, right? Um, and then there's there's the men who, you know, of course, you know, everybody's different in that sort, but just men are not willing to go through hardship, right? They're 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 gonna be faced with obstacles in in life, and it's question of whether or not question is whether if they're gonna be able to face those obstacles, depending on how much hardship they've gone through. But there's the other side of that. If you haven't gone through hardship then it kind of leads into this the confusion of really are you are you just are you really depressed in that sort or are you just you're just having difficulty of the fact that you haven't gone through hardship in a sense i don't know if i explained <clears throat> that properly but. no i get what you're saying but i think it all depends on as you said kind of comes back to uh, a lot of the time family uh your, your parental role who it is yeah and how you dictate um I don't think like not having hardship is not necessarily bad. It's not like, man, you have been through hardship. You don't know shit about life. That, mm -hmm. That's not true. And I, and I, what I mean by that is I have seen a lot of people that come from a family where like, you know, it's a healthy culture. Like, you know, with some time monetary, the, the financial, they don't have that issue, which is perfectly OK. Yeah. But what the structure that is placed you know for them when mm -hmm. it comes to your parents the values i think that what it really comes down to because i have seen you know some parents that have that ability to teach their kids mm. and they grow beautifully they are some household where but that, i think that's just everywhere though and all over whereas there are some kids they are they might be ungrateful because the parents are not present in a sense where the struggle they had to get to that position as you said, they might they might have alcohol addiction, drugs, this that, so they're not able to express themselves yeah. to their kids. Now kids get involved in certain bad crowds due to the status they have mm -hmm. when it comes to the fina uh, financial side. So sometimes I do I, I I think back. I'm like you know let me sit back. Let's not saying like hardship is good to go through, but understanding the main thing it comes down to is what you put in place as a household. What Raju puts down in his household as not be like a dictatorship but yeah. understand like hey guys this is who i am this is who your mother is this is how our experience has been mm. and this is what worked for us yeah in, in the, a sense that's a willingness to to understand and keep an open mind about it is well like because the thing the reason why i say this so for example like about my family right so when we separated from my mom i was i mean i was like 17 18 still young but i had I had that egoness, that anger in me, right? And my sister being, she was like, what? I think she was 14, Yo, yeah. 14 years old. She didn't have that motherhood figure in the household so, because there was two men in the household. It was just her by herself. Yeah. So for me, it was like, okay, like, I mean, I can't play the mother. Right? I can't do that. My dad can't do that. And it confused my dad in a sense, like, okay, how do I be kind to her, but also play the father role and being disciplined in a sense too, right? So, and she, I wouldn't say she still has this resentment pro problems like not problems I would resentments resentment in a sense like okay like how do you be genuine kind be that mother figure you know mm. caring in that sense right and I tr I mean I can't teach her I try to tell me like hey it's okay like just calm down you don't have to be you know you, you can let your guard off with us my family right but at the same time I can't really tell her because I'm not the mother right so there's that confusion between the two at the same time for me I mean I'm older than her, so I was, you know, for me, I had a different aspect of it. I was, ang I had a lot of anger. Hmm. So for me, over time, I think it was around when I was 22, 23, that's when I, my mind switched to being, being so negative, to being more willing to learn and ask the why. Yeah. Why am I like this? Right? Why is this happening? Okay, you know what? Like, whatever, went, what they went through, Right, it, it was just more of uh, a disagreement of where exactly you want both of you want to go in life, hmm. right? And of course, for them, they didn't learn that shit back home. No, right. So for me, for me, it was just. I mean, I had a different aspect of like, okay, why did everything happen the way it is? And probably it was for the best, right? Now the question is, how do I carry? How do I learn from this? You know, learn from this experience, and make sure you know, like, of course, it doesn't happen to my kids in hmm. the future. And, my dad even said that too. He's like, hey, look, like, whatever happened, happened. 
and he's like, I want you to understand like what to look out for 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 your partner in the future, right? Like mm. make sure how much it impacted the kids, and that's my thinking is like, okay, like I, I mean, basically, just in general in everything that I do, it's opened a lot of like a different aspect in my mind mm -hmm. of why things happen in my life, mm. right? Even through business, personal, whatever it is, relationship, whatever it is, yep. it's the why. Why? Yeah. Why do I need this? Why does it happen? Okay, is this something that I need to learn? Something I need to change my mind about? Or is this something that I need to be disciplined on knowing like what my values are in that sense, right? So, yeah. it, it's That's just, it's, you guys, you guys had a hard time, man. Like, yeah, it is, you had a hard which is, which is all good, right? It is what it is. Yeah. Right? I mean, so, it, it, you've grown from it and your, yeah. your family has, you know, evolved and adapted. Oh, yeah. But let's just own it for a second. Dude. Exactly. That was hard. Yep. That was yeah. tough, right? So, so it sucked. You yeah. had some sucky parts. It sucks. Yeah. Um, but with that being said, yeah, you, you, you all, you have your story. We're sitting with you today. Yep. You're yeah. going to tell us your story. Mm -hmm. yeah. Your sister has a very different story. Exactly. I don't even know her, but I know she has a different story. <laughs> she has a different right? story. So, and that's okay. There yeah, we that's, go. We'll bring your sister her, on next. That, <laughs> should, that, <fuck. laughs> that should be her story, right? Yeah. And she, she's every right to have her story. Exactly. And your father has a very different story. Every right to have his story. Yeah. And your mother has a very different right. Mm. They all... Like you love them, they, mm. they have every right to have their story, yeah, because it's their own experience. Like and then, stories. as a family, yeah. you guys had to figure it out, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you, you, you went through some <laughs> stuff and you, yeah. you learned and you made some mistakes and you made yep. some wins and you try your best. The beautiful part of it is, you guys were all so committed to making it work, yeah. That's what the family did. That yeah, was the beautiful yeah. part of the story, yeah. Is despite the crap, we <laughs> went through it, we yeah. went through it together. We might not have always been at the same page, yeah. Might have been some ugly parts, but we went through it together. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, no, that's you committed that's to a beautiful it. Thing. Committed, oh, yeah, right? yeah, no, There's a beauty in that. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, at, if you're a philosopher, <laughs> you're going to keep asking why. Yeah. So then, if you're that's you, then keep asking. Yeah. If you are a, you know, a, like a more of a, a pragmatic type of personality, yeah. you're like, I don't care why. Let's just get it done. <laughs> like yeah. it just depends on yeah. who you, you want to be, right? Yeah. How, how you're wired. Yeah. But and if you're like, if you're like the 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 um, family focused mm. personality, mm. then you're going to over try. Yeah. Like you don't got to be the mom. Yeah. You're just not going to be right. <laughs> but yeah. you do got to be the solid older brother. Exactly. Older brother, that's yeah. your role. That's, yeah. that's what God gave you. Do it really well. Exactly. And know that you're going to have limits. Because oh, she's yeah. her own person, yeah, and she's gonna say no sometimes, yeah. and that's the reality. So, <laughs> like that, it's gonna be some parts. Even yeah. if you had a nuclear family, you're still gonna argue. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, like there, I'm not. I don't mean to poke fun. <laughs> no, but, no, no, no. But like, there's there's some parts of it that are <laughs> that are very beautiful, and yeah. there's some parts of it that are normal. Normal, yeah. And there's some ugly parts that, oh, that yeah, you had some hard times, and yeah. good for you. You guys came through it. Yeah. I know. But yeah. I think though, a lot Long of people, journey. even if whatever family situation is, I think. Eventually, like I think, kids they need to as they grow up, they they just need to ask that why? Why has everything happened in their family? Why why do your parents have to go through so much difficulty when they come here? And have and just because it's just like why you know, why do you want them to ask that? Well, because then it, it's just when we're kids, right? We just don't we have the more egotistic kind of behavior, right? Yeah. Like no, 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 right? Like not really having an understanding. It's just as kids, too, yeah, yeah, right? that's it's just, they're not developed, mm. right? Yeah. Yep. And it's just over time, I think it's just, you just need to start questioning why is everything being, and being able to, re, being able to relate to them, being able to understand like, I, I appreciate that you've been through this so I can have this kind of life. Yeah. Yeah. I get and it. And that kind of bridges the gap with your parents, right? right? Yeah. Being able to relate to them be like, Hey, like I understand what you've gone through. And cause it's like parents for themselves. I mean, they sacrifice everything they can. <clears throat> yeah. I think you're talking about like just a. Part of it, what you're talking about is this natural psychological development. Oh, exactly. And, and then people tend to ask different questions at questions. different stages of life. Yeah. So in, in, you know, when you're 14, you ask very simple questions. Simple questions, It's a yeah. lot about in the mirror, yeah. right? Whereas in your 20s, you start asking, well, like, what kind of impact do I want to have? In your 30s, you start having the impact. In your 40s, I'm going to think of a legacy. And it kind of evolves as, as oh, decades yeah. go. It's normal yeah. psychological development. But what it allows for... And hopefully, yeah. is so. So in my example, yeah. I'm like in the middle, right? Mm -hmm. I got my mom, who's like 75, 80, like mm -hmm. in this age group, mm -hmm. and I'm like 30 years younger than her, right? Mm. So, you know, 
one could argue we're both adults. Yeah. <laughs> one could say, oh, they're both adults. They're going to be really good together. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes we're not. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's terrible. And butting heads, not communicating well, not listening well. Sometimes it's just not done well. Yeah. Right? And sometimes it's very beautiful. Mm -hmm. And the, but both adults. Yeah. So if we suck sometimes, there's going to be other people that suck sometimes. And, and that's okay. You allow for, allow for freedom and, and that, that's okay. Yeah. And, and part of it is, you know, big picture, mm. what are you committing to? Yeah. I think exactly. that's the big thing. So if you, if you stumble here and you stumble there and they stumble there, mm. forgiveness, it's part yeah. of our lives. Mm. Forgiveness is a skill. It's a practice, mm. right? If you believe in forgiveness, then you'll do it more often. Yeah. If you realize that forgiveness actually unleashes your own burden more than it unleashes them, because yeah. I'm the only one harboring anger. They don't harbor my anger. anger yeah. you know, I'm carrying the backpack. Yeah. True. So if you want to carry the backpack, then carry it. Yeah. If you want to put it down, forgive. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. up to you. Yeah. So this is like our choice, right? Yeah. We have exactly. our own timeline. And yeah, the, the big picture, I think like perspective is what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. The kids to that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. You, you want to, you know, um, even in kindergarten, mm. some of the teachers will say, uh, the golden rule is do unto others as you want them what to do unto, unto you. you. Yeah. So you're already teaching a little bit of perspective, mm -hmm. a little bit of think outside of yourself. Yeah. It's being messaged, right? Yeah. And then later on, uh, you have birthday parties, make sure you invite all the friends, <laughs> friends. Not, not just one, just not just two, <laughs> no exclusion, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. So that's being messaged, right? There's yeah. examples. And then, you know, the, the beautiful part of the, the philosophical part of what you asked yeah. is maybe in their 20s, mm. they start reflecting themselves. themselves yeah. They start asking why, what's the purpose? What yeah. can I learn from this? Yeah. That's like a really special step. Yeah. 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 And I think as we're kind of winding down, one thing I do want to kind of understand like um, that you have is company culture. Mm -hmm. Now, what I mean by that is yeah. <laughs> a lot of the time it's, it's hard to find values that you hone in on yeah. and replicate that in your work setting with the people you yeah, hire. Yeah, yeah. See, the thing is like, I'm a huge firm believer on, of like the people that I hire are understanding of like, not saying they replicate that all the values that I present, but to a certain extent, it's like my existence is when I'm not there, there's no deficiency in there. It's still, it's still being felt, but like, oh, this is ran by someone uh, like Raju sure. facility, Sure. Mm -hmm. you know? And sure. how do you dig, how, how do you, go about the hiring process because I know it's tough it's hard to find people that yeah. share those core values and understand what the company so, culture is so the first step is like identifying them mm. right yeah so, so in your company have you identified the core values yeah okay good so so whatever they are the three yeah. or four or five perhaps uh, are they public like did oh. you share them I've, I've wished them out okay good uh, so if, if I apply for a job in your company do I know what they are before I apply no, no, right. I, I, so there's a problem. That's true. That's okay. Yeah. But but you could, today you're going to change it. Right? <laughs> so so like, if you want to recruit those people, tell them what you're about. Oh, yeah. Put it on your website. Mm. Core values, and, and don't make it quirky, like yeah, corny. Yeah, yeah. Like make it real. <laughs> like it's got to be authentic, right? Yeah. And I'm sure it would be. Yeah. So your core values might be, um, you know, teamwork and uh, integrity and uh, hard work and honest delivery honest, to yeah, our yeah. customers. So this is pretty straightforward, straightforward right? Yeah. As that's the kind of the, the template, right? <laughs> cookie cutter four. <laughs> so you got the cookie cutter four and you're going to put your own masala on there. Yeah, exactly. This is the one I like or whatever. So then when you're recruiting for job ABC, uh, if I'm the type of person who, where I want my values to align with your company, at least I know what they are. No, yeah. And I can self-select saying, I really believe in this guy company, yeah. or his values or the company's values mm -hmm. or these three or four people all that used to work there, all are kind of saying the same thing. There's a pattern. I'm drawn to that. I'm a magnet for that. Yeah. Then at least we can meet. Exactly. And then you can, you know, interact and there. evaluate and you can have the conversation. Mm -hmm. um, whereas if it's, if it's absent, now you're leaving it to the other people's understanding. It's a chaotic You're not workspace. being clear. Yep. Mm -hmm. So just be more clear. Start there. So once you've done that, then you meet people and of course you're going to ask about the value systems, but also the technical skills of the job and mm -hmm. the experience. And you know, you're going to get a, like a, there's like the normal HR process, just like yeah, ABCD, basic, EFG, yeah, yeah, yeah. but also you're going to try to get a vibe. Right? Exactly. And so then the vibe is you have a, you can have your own process, second interview with somebody else. Mm. You can have them come and shadow you for a day exactly. and spend time in your real operations mm. and then let them sleep on it. Mm. After you spent the day in our real operations on a regular day, normal music, normal sunlight, normal people coming and going. When you woke up the next morning, did you feel more inspired? Exactly. Did you feel less inspired? Did you feel meh? 
What did you feel? Like, let them reflect. But do you feel so like it comes from them, you? It starts from well, you? Well, part of it is me, yeah. of course, part of it, but not all of it. That's mm. not fair. That's impossible. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. can't all be you yeah. unless you have a, like one, one person like one, shop. Exactly, yeah. If you have 10 people on your team or 100 or 500 or 1,000, it's going to be impacted by all those people, mm. right? So, yes, it has to start with leadership, yeah. one or two or four or five people. Yeah, of course, it has to start there. Mm. They're pointing the arrow. They're the head of the arrow. Yeah. Yes. But then the other members of the arrow hopefully are in line mm. values wise. And then that arrow will go further together. But if you have a couple of outliers, you might have those people on your team and, and they might self select away. They yeah. might leave. You might fire them. You might see that they're always, uh, that there's always friction with that team member. They don't agree with our with policies the, uh, that you might start to pick up on those clues. And then you, you got to have some management. Yeah. Right? So you manage them and maybe they come back in line. Oh, exactly. I didn't realize. Or maybe they're like, no, nah, I'm not about this life. I'm leaving cancel yeah, yeah. culture. See you later. <laughs> like you you got to figure out like there's going to be some of that, right? In a long career journey, you're going to have some of that. Yeah. And hopefully you have more and more that are in line with the arrow. Okay. Yeah. Do you feel like now, obviously you own you know, many facilities. Do you feel like now you're more, you know, empathetic to people's situation and to work towards it? Or you're yeah. more like, they'll be like, no, this is the bottom line of my company because yeah, it's your question. reputation that's Good state. question. So if we're talking about like, like somebody having a hard time yeah. mm -hmm. who's a really good team member, it's easy to be empathetic. Mm -hmm. It's very, very easy because, because there's over time, you look for patterns, exactly. right? So pattern recognition. If there's somebody who's always reliable, honest, mm -hmm. uh, in you know high integrity, um, treats the company as their own, and their performance dips after a few years, that's probably not a pattern, pattern performance yep, problem. Exactly. That's a, something else going problem, on. Yeah. So I'm going to go ask, like, hey, let's talk about this. I'm going to at least ask. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be human element yep. way before a performance element. And then we might bring up performance too. Exactly. Like, hey, what, what happened here? And usually you're going to get to the answer because it's something else going on. Exactly. So you work through that with the person. Yeah. If it's early, if it's like month one, there's less of that. They have mm -hmm. less opportunity mm -hmm. because they are been, you know, I don't know yet. Exactly. I don't have a pattern yet. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. So then it's harder for me to be human. Exactly. I, I will still be human, but there's just less. It's just less. They don't know me as well. I don't know them as well. We've only had a month together. It's less. And so it, you still have the human conversation, but it's, it's not quite the same. It's not. That's right? so mm -hmm. just this reality. Yeah. Now, that's okay. You can still be very, very kind and still be very, very honest and still be very, very, um, you know, uh, sympathetic or empathetic, whatever the situation yeah. warrants. You still do all those things. But, you know, and then on the flip side, you asked about cutthroat or bottom line, <laughs> to use those words, yeah. right? So, you know, if there's somebody on the team that's doing a good job and they're a really good team member, they work really hard, we don't expect people to be perfect. Mm -hmm. None of us are. I'm uh, not, no, and nope. the team won't be. So uh, we allow for mistakes. Exactly. Like, make some mistakes, learn from them. Exactly. Fail forward. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Fall let's forward. do that. Yep. Do, that's a good thing. And then let's talk about what you learned. Let's, exactly. let's open that. Mm -hmm. Where did you fail forward today? Mm -hmm. Where did you fail forward today? This is my blunder. Man, I blundered last <laughs> week. Let me talk about it with you. Yeah. Like, it's okay. Let's talk it's going to happen. And here's how I hold myself accountable exactly. going forward. Boom, boom, boom. And you, you work forward. So I think I'm getting off track here, but no, no, I'll bring okay. myself back. <laughs> um, so to the point of like, you know, cutthroat, very little. Like, that's not the cult, corporate culture that yeah. we have. Um, being mean and vindictive and those things, they don't land well. It's they not don't. who I am. It also doesn't land well in our corporate culture. It's just not, it it's not for us. It isn't there are industries either. where that's needed, needed exactly. and warranted and that's the understanding exactly. so they, they, that that those industries draw those people the people exactly right they're not healthcare facilities <laughs> yeah. they're just not they're, they're like let's be honest they're like uh, stockbrokers and they're like well um, i think of like billions you know that show billions i think of like those those, those i know that's a tv show <laughs> yeah. it's exaggerated but but i think of that type of industry where it is just about the bottom dollar exactly that's that's what drives it mm -hmm. that's a very different industry yeah, yeah that's what i tell people a lot of time like even for myself like even while i operated like owned the papa john's uh, i had another one out of the out of city mm -hmm. but one thing i tell people i'm like be heard and to be heard 
because there are a lot of employees that come in I because I, I, a lot of them do come they are immigrants because like labor force it's easier to get, apply for them some there are some times where as you said you don't have enough time with them to understand their you know patterns mm -hmm. so this I recently had this issue with one employees like a month in right and I'm struggling and I'm like hey I'm like I don't see this working. So for me, I'm like, let me sit down with you. Mm -hmm. Is there certain things that I'm doing wrong that you're not getting a full understanding of a certain thing? Mm -hmm. So that's what I tell people. Just because you are like an owner or you have this leadership role, that doesn't mean you got to be a dick to them. Because oh. at the end of the day, the, what's the first thing that will strive your business when you're not there? The human connection you have with your employees. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, I tell my employees, I'm not better than you. Mm -hmm. Just because I own this place, they don't dictate that, oh, you're less of a person. No. Mm -hmm. All my employees, like, we laugh, we giggle, we it creates a positive environment, mm -hmm. and it grows my business as well. Yeah. Because now there's not a person not coming in miserable. Man, fuck this guy. I got to work here, but I got to work here because I need to get money. <laughs> you know? And, and, and I have felt this. Yeah. A lot of people yeah. do. There's a bunch of drivers yeah. that have came in. They're like, man, I'm not getting this much money. And I'm like, listen, man, you're not making much money. That's fine. Go somewhere else. I'm not forcing you to stay here. And if it's For me, it's like creating that, you know, environment. Yeah within myself to succeed so you know it, it, i just wanted to get to the interest because obviously you're facilitating at a at a higher occupation compared to mine mine i just i'm you know four or five people before it was eight well, it's a smaller number yeah yeah, yeah exactly so yeah. my number is way smaller so for me it was right. just like but that was almost sometimes is more important than exactly more. sometimes yeah. Like, sometimes yeah like the eight if one is not happy it actually impacts like, everybody else so yeah there, it's important regardless yeah that's kind of what i'm saying yeah so i'm glad you're focused on it yeah, yeah it's very important that's what my mom tells me too my, my, my yeah. mom and dad always tell me they're like never disregard what another person is going to yeah mm -hmm. especially when it comes to people that are applying for these jobs predominantly it's going to be someone sure. who's coming from in uh their students yeah. yeah you might you might you might be really surprised sometimes by what they tell, what they tell you, you their exactly. insights sometimes they don't feel like they have a voice yeah but they're very smart and, and there's exactly. a lot of wisdom there and the you, you know look for the surprises exactly. it's actually really fun you know it is yeah. it's going back to that that one person that i was hiring and then i was kind of like i'm like wow you're so young and you're taking on all this and i'm like damn yeah. i'm like yeah i'm like i understand you i'm like whatever i can help i will yeah but sure. then but then again you have to come back to you gotta understand it's your business as well yeah. you gotta preserve yeah. what you have built what do you yeah build? there's, there's you know? a layer right? exactly there's there's a layer. Layers, you must layers. protect if you do, if you are overly empathetic or sympathetic at the you expense of your business, mm -hmm. now you're actually negatively impacting the other seven employees' yeah. livelihood too. Exactly. So you must balance it. Yeah. yeah. So how do you how do you go about with like, for example, um, with someone that's trying to apply for jobs that are trying to get into the career field? You know, like I mean, jobs nowadays like there's like hundred applicants, two hundred applicants. <laughs> right? How do you go about with trying to? give advice to them as to how they can separate themselves from all other applicants whoa it's a deep question <laughs> how do you stand out uh, I, well I, actually i don't think that they ever ask me that question mm. yeah so no no that's not true that's not fair okay so for physios yeah I mean, that's where it does apply okay because okay. they will i will get asked that question Education quite often quality. so you know final year of physiotherapy school mm -hmm. there's often that question is asked what does Pivotal look for? How can I set myself apart? Do I actually align with, like, do my values align with yours? Uh, so that's a common dialogue. Yeah. In that time, um, usually I start with, like, this is kind of what we're about. Yeah. So I'm just telling them, this is who we are. This is where we have come from. This is our history. This is where we are today. This is where I forecast us going. You know. Let's start with just, so let's, this, let's start with the facts, the basics, yeah. right? Let's yeah. start with the facts and does it even interest you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if it does, then let's further the dialogue. See, yeah. and, and if it does, then okay, then what sets you apart? These are the people that tend, and I just look back at history. Mm -hmm. The people that have been our stars, yeah. what are the themes? Mm -hmm. What are yeah. the common behaviors or tendencies? Yeah. There's no perfect, like, you know, uh, one answer, yeah. but here are the themes of the people that have done really well in this industry, in our organization. Exactly. Here are the themes. And I just, I know what those are. So I share those with the people oh, and I say, yeah. figure out if that's for you. Yeah. If it's for you, if that's, if you hear that and you're inspired, mm. then go get it. Go get it. Get yeah. after it. Exactly. Yeah. If you hear that and you're like, whoa, too much work or, <laughs> or that's not really who I am, I am, then that's okay. Perfectly fine. Maybe not the right environment or maybe, exactly. maybe there's a better fit. Sometimes it's actually, so more often than not, <laughs> it's like a good thing and, and it goes in a positive <laughs> yeah. way. But sometimes yeah. there's been some examples yeah. where they will, we will have that dialogue and we get to this awkward place and the person's like, uh, like they don't want to say no. They're like, I don't like, it's know. Like a, yeah. They don't want to turn away <laughs> yeah. potential good opportunity. It's kind of weird. So, so 
there's been a couple of examples where in the end, I won't tell you how all the conversations <laughs> went, but in the end, it actually led to me helping them meet somebody else. Mm. It actually led to me saying, you know what, I think there's a better fit, no hard feelings, let's just, are you open to me introducing you to somebody else? Yeah. And you explore whether it's a better fit or not. Yep. You guys chat. Mm. And, and actually it's led to good things mm. in those situations. So sometimes it's less like a big, again, it's about perspective. Exactly. What's yeah. actually the right fit here? Yeah. And then aim there. Obviously, I want to benefit my business, so mm -hmm. I will try. But I don't want to benefit in the dishonest way. Yeah. Like, this is the truth. Here are the themes. Here, this is what they are. Yeah. So does it align or not? If so, let's try. Exactly. If not, let me problem solve a different way. Let me yeah. look at it a different <laughs> angle. And it yeah. actually has led to some good things. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. No, the, I mean, from understanding, like, the way you are, the, the way you conversate, for even because this is the first time we ever sat down, like, personally, from, um, yeah. you know, you seem like a person who's well thought out and and willing to understand and you know to reciprocate that response back. Mm -hmm. You don't see anybody as higher or negative. So, which I think those are quality that people should work towards. Right, right. And I genuinely, immediately, I tell people to like understand like when you walk in a room, learn how to articulate yourself in a manner where. Imagine if you were in the reverse role. Mm -hmm. That's how I want to be treated. Yeah, as you said, cool. it goes that's back really to the kindergarten cool. thing. Yeah. Same thing. So I think, um, yeah, man, I it, this, the way you say certain things the way you like it, it's so elegant the way you put things and, and i love fruit loops <laughs> no it really is and I, I mean it because like Thank i we, i tr yeah. me and him look and try to strive towards you know being have that ability to um speaking is it, it's an art form mm -hmm. yeah and we're just you know on a journey and progressing yeah. and you know and learning that and when you do come across someone that that is you know going through that journey and you go you are you know someone that you can strive to or towards i feel like it has a different impact on you as an individual mm -hmm. and i think everybody out there should strive towards that you know don't just man like because a lot of people do fall victim to just that cultural vulture thing where like rappers are like singing like this and half of the people i don't even know what they're saying these days they be like you know what i mean i'm like what you just say i don't know what you just could think. and don't try to emulate that thing that's something that's good i'm fancy of this yeah. no right. you know take you anywhere in your career regardless yeah. of what structure you have whether you sure. know you're you're leading a rap label or whatever it is mm -hmm. you gotta have some way to articulate mm -hmm. yourself you look at all the successful people like jay-z's and stuff you don't think they're not talking this rubbish that you can't even understand what they're saying you know so I tell people to improve on that. It genuinely like that's so funny. Uh, like I hate jibber jabber. Like oh man, yeah. some of the I'm, I'm like, what did you just say? So so we have to acknowledge like <laughs> like largely you're correct, but. <laughs> Charles Barkley still hit it big, oh. yeah. right? There are people, there are people that don't articulate themselves very well. That are very, very popular. He says right? the most didn't he win an Emmy? He didn't did. They, he won an he, Emmy. I don't know what he wanted for. Right? The, what did he win it for? Well, it's for commentating. It's for the was TNT it? show. Yeah. Well, he sounds like the most like he said like he's it was exactly as he goes back himself being who he is like talks about the way he says yeah, remember yeah. how he talks about Houston uh, women he always talks oh, about with oh, them. Yeah, yeah. don't repeat it don't repeat it don't repeat it, don't repeat it. but you yeah, know yeah, as yeah, he said but yeah. sometimes that does you know it, there's a charm to it there's there certain, certain guys yeah, yeah. there's a certain yeah. charm to it yeah. that people have it but you know and, and it inspires uh, for personally for us speaking it allows us to grow um, and understand like this is how it should be done. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, you, I, me and Mok take, I don't know, speaking for myself and Mok as well, sometimes he tells me all the time. Mm -hmm. He's like, man, the way Raju speaks and the way he, it holds authority. It genuinely does. In a room, when you speak, it holds authority. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I want to thank you for that and thank showing that guys. difference. Because like, you. it's different. It's different compared yeah. to all the other guests we have. Mm -hmm. The way you have been so precise and concise and listening and mm -hmm. asking. That's different. You don't you don't get that a lot of the time because all of the guests they speak experience about the experience and that's it. They don't they don't ask mm -hmm. as well because mm -hmm. and that shows your willingness to understand both sides. And then I want to mm -hmm. thank you for that. And you know even thinking, taking time out of your day. Yeah. We know everybody has their own yeah. um, business. I mean on the system set up at this time. I got to do this, and especially when you have kids and business and mm -hmm. wife. So I genuinely want to say bottom of my heart, thank you for coming, man. Thank you. And, thank uh, you. I'll have the kids watch the show. Yeah, yeah. yeah but I mean, about feedback. I think it's like the kids give us feedback, and that's yeah. something that we will not you be need proud about. Yeah, you need it. Yeah. And that's yeah. what we want at the end of the day. We're like, okay, we got you guys. Yeah. We'll change that for next time. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> so it's good. Thank, thank you, man. Guys. It was Appreciate a pleasure well. talking to you. Uh, yes, thank you. Yeah. All right, guys. That's everything for this episode. Uh, thank y'all for tuning in. Man, y'all hit the subscribe button, like yeah. button, man. Yeah, y'all be slacking, like especially with the subscribe button. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, thank y'all for tuning in. Uh, see y'all later. Peace. <laughs>